All right, so today we are testing the RX 4080 in the upcoming Layers of Fear. Now let's just go over the settings quickly. We'll be testing at 1440p and 4K. Currently it's at 1440p on the high preset. I don't have uh, ray tracing enabled and uh, no upscaling is enabled either. Here you can see the rest of the settings are just uh, disabled motion blur and uh, that's pretty much it. All right, so uh, let's start our benchmark run here. Today we're pairing this GPU with a 12700K from Intel running at stock and that again is paired with DDR4 4000 megahertz CL18 memory. Now I'll put the specs on the screen right now so you can pause it if you want to see any further information. Alright, so uh, this is the first time I'm playing any of these uh, Layers of Fear games. I won't be playing it at all. I actually recorded this video with the sound off because I scare quite easily, <laughs> especially with these uh, type of games. Uh, I prefer uh, first person shooter games or RPG games. I don't uh, like, I mean, just look at that. Uh, I actually tried to record this uh, whilst playing and some of these scenes just had me jumping out of my chair. So I decided to just run around with the sound off and I'm doing a voiceover recording at the moment. Not that any of that matters, uh, I'm here just to test performance. You can see that uh, at 1440p on the high preset, we are actually getting a very high refresh rate experience. We had one started there and that was when the, well, all, everything in that other room just collapsed. Uh, our 0.1% lows took a bit of a hit there. But from what I can see so far is that this game doesn't really suffer from a traversal stutter like most Unreal Engine games or most Unreal Engine 4 games, I should say. Uh, that and uh, Stutter Nights or also known as a Fortnite, which runs on Unreal Engine 5.1. Right, so this game uses a Lumen, and uh, Lumen is used for dynamic lighting. So the lighting looks pretty good. Lumen is uh, software-based uh, ray tracing, basically. Uh, not as accurate as a hardware ray tracing, but uh, it comes pretty close. And then you do have the option to enable hardware ray tracing as well. And uh, as far as I can see, the hardware ray tracing is then responsible for uh, shadows and reflections. So currently we don't have a hardware ray tracing enabled, but you can see that the frame rate is actually pretty good. We're getting a high refresh rate experience here, getting an average of 160 frames per second, which is definitely not terrible. All right, let's see what happens once we actually enable ray tracing. All right, so in this uh, exact same scene, it looks like we lost around uh, 10 frames per second, which is <laughs> pretty good. Uh, usually ray tracing takes a much bigger hit. I just can't fathom why anybody would want uh, more accurate lighting, shadows and reflections in a game that seems to be pretty scary by itself. But I guess for the hardcore horror fans, uh, this is actually a welcome addition. As I said, personally, I'm not going to be playing this game. This just, uh, rubs me up the wrong way completely. Now, you'll notice that uh, some scary things happening here, but uh, if you actually move around in this game, some doors uh, close and you can't open them again, then some walls actually change as well. I've got no idea what's going on in this game. There's not real much of an intro once you actually start the game. So, I mean, it's only a demo, so that will probably be explained a little bit better once the game actually starts. I actually started off with as a woman and now I'm a man so it seems like you play as different characters in different situations uh, and you can see that the whole hallway actually changed now completely. But you can see that the lighting looks good, the game itself looks good, and it performs pretty well. I mean, it, sure, that it is a very small area, so I think that's the reason why there's no traversal stutters. Or maybe Unreal Engine 5 just does not suffer from the same inherent traversal stutter issues that Unreal Engine 4 does. All right, so that's enough of 1440p. Let's see what happens at 4K. All right, we're now at 4K and our frame rate literally halved. And that's to be expected, obviously. I actually had to up the gamma a bit just for this recording. The game is a little bit more dark than this. Uh, the weird things are happening here. But uh, the game is a lot darker than this, actually. So I just uh, up the gamma in the game menu. Otherwise, you guys wouldn't have been able to see anything in the recording. Now, one thing that I really want to point out here is that this is at 4K on the highest uh, preset uh, 
no ray tracing, but uh, look at that VRAM usage in the top left hand corner there. We're sitting at 5 gig VRAM usage, right? We've got uh, 7 gig allocated, but only 5 gig used. Now, <laughs> this is definitely something that a lot of modern games uh, should try and accomplish, uh, in my opinion. Sure, once again, the area where we're playing in might be very small, but let's see what happens once we enable ray tracing. I'm just going to hit the apply resolution just to make sure that it does apply. <coughs> Even with ray tracing on, we are still sitting at around Our five gigabytes of VRAM usage. Now, as I said, uh, as I was beginning to say, the game is pretty small. The area we've seen so far is pretty small so obviously open world games have a lot more to render i mean this game seems to render one area at a time because you really can't go back once a door closes i mean we can't go back down the stairs anymore so that might help with the vram allocation but uh, just the textures really really look extremely Good. So I would have expected the VRAM usage to be a lot higher than this, especially at 4K with a ray tracing enabled, hardware ray tracing that is. Alright, I'm just going to skip ahead until where I enable DLSS. We're going to be using the exact same settings, 4K high, I'm just going to set DLSS to quality. And let's see what happens to our frame rate. All right, uh, that actually gave us a very nice bump. We're getting around uh, 120 frames per second in this very warm, light intensive area. As I said, I've got no idea what's supposed to be happening in this game. I've got no idea what I'm supposed to be doing in this game, but uh, we're just here at a place now where we actually pick up a flashlight. So I just wanted to see what the lighting looks like with the flashlight. So yeah, we are back to the lighting again. Now back in this area, our VRAM usage actually dropped. We're now sitting at 4 gig instead of 5 gig. So, I mean, the VRAM usage in this game is very, very good. All right, this game officially is very, very weird. As I said, I haven't played the first two back in, well, the first one actually launched back in 2016. And during my research for this game, I came across uh, some gameplay videos uh, for from back then. And even then, it was uh, extremely scary. I literally had to watch those videos with the uh, subtitles. I just couldn't. Right, that's a very solid advice. All right, so I just uh, skipped ahead to another scene where we just don't heed that guy's advice because here we are starting another fire. And uh, it's a pretty fire. I mean, it's a very good looking fire. But you can see that our performance was pretty good as well with DLSS enabled. We had an average of 131 frames per second. That's at 4K with uh, Lumen and a hardware ray tracing enabled. So uh, pretty solid uh, performance here. All right, but that's going to be it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.